Good evening. I'm Jane Burrell with Public Programs at LACMA, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this evening's Distinguished Architects Lecture Series with Ma Yun Sung. I want to say first a very special thank you to Francesca Garcia Marquez, who has been <laughs> Francesca has been developing and organizing these programs for us for over 20 years, first as the Masters of Architecture Lecture Series, and now the Distinguished Architects Lecture Series. And now it is my pleasure to introduce architecture critic Michael Webb, who will introduce our distinguished speaker. And thank you all again for coming. Good evening. Um, to appreciate an architect's work, it helps to know what they're up against. Ma Yan Song got off to a great start, a Masters of Architecture at Yale. He interned with Murphy Yan in Chicago, with Peter Eisenman in New York, took a studio with Zaha Hadid at Yale, and she invited him to uh, join her in London, which he did for a year. Then he went back to Beijing and opened his office in 2004. And you'd think, well, the rest would take its course. But you have to understand that in China, private architectural offices were extinct between 1949 and 1997. Any architectural graduate had to join a big state institute and grind out boring uh, official buildings. There were no private buildings then. and. Um, so when finally the government allowed private partnerships to establish themselves, they were starting from ground zero. And even, at, even I think up till now, a lot of the more prestigious jobs go to either the state institutes, these huge conglomerates, or to star architects from abroad. So it's been a terrific struggle for independent architects which makes their achievement all the more remarkable. Uh, Wang Shu won the uh, Pritzker a couple of years ago for an extraordinary number of beautifully crafted buildings in uh, Hangzhou, uh, and indeed designing an entire campus for the Sh Chinese Art Institute. When I first met Ma Yan Song in Beijing in 2008, he, had, he told me that he had entered 120 competitions in the past two years. He had won one of them, which wasn't built. He had completed one building, a small uh, pool pavilion in a gated community outside Beijing. But, he told me, he was going to be building high-rise buildings all over China. And my reaction was, good luck. I mean, you know, <laughs> what optimism. But the fact is that he has done just that. In a very few years, he has established himself as one of the leading architects in China. He is got a number of major buildings built or in construction. He built two acclaimed residential towers outside Toronto. Uh, tomorrow, he will be meeting with the um, Park uh, Department in Chicago to present a revised design for the um, George Lucas Museum, and we can all wish him luck in that. Um, and he is designing a building in Beverly Hills, just a few blocks from here on Wilshire Boulevard, which will be taking shape next year. So it's a great privilege to uh, welcome one of China's leading architects, Ma Yan Song. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm an architect from Beijing, China, but also uh, we actually start uh, a studio here in Los Angeles, so so I'm also uh, from from here as well. Um, <clears throat> and I was told that uh, I was invited because my picture looked young and I speak English. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, uh, actually, I'm trying to give a good speech tonight and. Uh, uh, we're going to show you some really uh, new photos of some uh, latest project uh, and exciting that 
Uh, our first uh, US project is in uh, Los Angeles. I'm going to share that with you. <coughs> first, but first, I want to uh, explain my topic, Shanshui City. Um, so from the image, you can tell, because image is, is universal language. You can see the city and nature. And so I, that's the basic topic I'm going to uh, talk about, artificial, man-made world and uh, nature, and what's the relationship between them. And this uh, uh, <coughs> artwork uh, I like very much. An uh, artist, friend of mine, uh, his name is Cai Guoqiang. He's, from, uh, he's now based in New York. He did a lot of fireworks, and that's a very early work he did in 96. He did uh, this cloud in front of the Manhattan Island. You can see the, the Twin Tower was, was still there, and uh, because of, of the perspective, I think this cloud and himself is so powerful because he looks so big, you know, bigger than the, 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 the tallest building in, in New York. And he was like questioning, you know, what's, uh, what's uh, um, the future of our city. And uh, many years later, I was, I was a student uh, here in the States. I, I went to Yale, and in 2002, that was uh, like one year after 9-11, all the architecture students and architects were proposing for the new World Trade Center in New York. And this was my, my student uh, like proposal. I was new to the States. I didn't know what's the, you know, the complicity uh, of the events uh, of 9-11. But uh, I, I proposed something like uh, uh, a park. Uh, so this is a, a, a view from the top. You see a, a huge a park with a lake and the, and the green floating above the city. So this is another view from the bottom. You see all the other uh, vertical towers and the, the new building. Actually, it's, it's, the, the background is my design. And uh, it's, it's horizontal floating above the city. And uh, I, was, I almost forget why I did this uh, and how. But because it's a long time ago, um, but a critic in China keep reminding me this is my starting point because I didn't know architecture so well. So, so something uh, instinct about this proposal. So I kept this image in my, my studio all the time. And uh, <clears throat> there was a funny thing. Uh, a client of mine saw the image and he wanted to uh, build it. And uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, uh, this is uh, this, uh, ambitious. But, I, but later, uh, I, I realized he was talking about the building in the front. Uh, <laughs> I, liked, I liked that tower, but I couldn't do it. Uh, that was an early time, uh, 2004, when I started uh, uh, our uh, small studio in China. And uh, we start, because uh, there's no building commission, so, so I want to show you a very early project of our proposal. Uh, our studio. Uh, <clears throat> one day I walk on the street, I saw the, this fish market, and they sell fish. And so I, I bought the f small go goat fish, golden fish, for my, for my studio, and they give us uh, a, a fish tank for free, uh, which is, I, I, I think sh it could be more expensive than fish. Uh, <laughs> it's a glass uh, cubic space. And then, <clears throat> And then I saw the, you know, the, the living condition for those fish are, were really poor, and they were put in the plastic box and put on the floor. So I was thinking about you know, our modern architecture. Uh, I, I thought maybe they give us a free fish tank because it's very, you know, it's a mass production. Um, it could be very uh, you know, high efficiency and low cost. That's exactly the principle that the modern architecture follows. So everything about mass production and the duplication, and what about 
humans' feelings and uh, our position in modern cities and architecture. So we, so in the studio, because we had nothing to do, so we start to look at how the fish behave in this uh, cubic space. So we, we, we had the two cameras, and uh, this, this actually, we trace their movement uh, for, for like uh, one day. <clears throat> and then we, we, we saw um, those red dots actually are the space they, um, they use. So we, we designed a new fish tank for, for, for them. And, and we, we think this is a, a house for fish. Basically, we took the original box, the cubic space, and we start to transform uh, uh, this volume into more uh, complex uh, space. We bring the outer surface in, into the volume and then come out from the other side. So all those tubes, they're actually uh, hollowed. It's, it's air. So the space inside become very, very um, complex. And then we produce it. Because uh, the fish tank is like this size. It's not big, so we can afford that. Uh, but in reality, actually, architect uh, are not, not supposed to pay for, for their buildings. <laughs> it's too, too big. Uh, so we, we had the, our first uh, architecture. And we showed this. We, we got invitation to show this in our architecture biennale, and we showed this, and we put a scale person there. So it looked like an architecture model. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> But the, what's interesting thing about this is the fish become so big uh, compared to person, and uh, you kind of uh, because when we have a fish in, in in our home, like we feed them, of course we know they desire nature and freedom. But uh, if they want to live in this very comfortable uh, environment, they have to uh, give up something. Uh, so that's very similar situation for for humans uh, in in the city. So here we we want to say you know the fish dominant the world and the uh, <coughs> humans smaller. Um, but in the in the process we try to understand what they need for space, although we don't know the result. Uh, um, it's uh, ideal for them or not, because they don't speak. Uh, but uh, maybe so, same for, for humans as well. Uh, how many house, I mean, at least in China, we have uh, so many big apartment buildings, they're all similar. How many of them really designed for human being or their behaviors? And so how many designers really think about uh, the user's emotion. So that was, uh, I think that was, the fish tank uh, was very suitable for architecture uh, um, topics. And then um, we did a much larger project, which was uh, a, a toilet, uh, a addition to a, a traditional courtyard in Beijing. That's the environment I was uh, growing up in, in center Beijing. But this is a very funny picture because there's a very beautiful wall and uh, I mean, a lot of people criticizing China, uh, Beijing demolished the old building, but in this image they're actually being protected. Uh, from the, because they were kept for them commercial value because a lot of uh, visitors come to see them. <clears throat> but what's, uh, you, you see those house and, and, and the, that's a toilet. That's a, that's a public toilet because a lot of uh, courtyard, they don't have, a, they don't have the <clears throat> private toilet. The same, the, the, the same toilet at the background, you can see, and, the, and then the, this very enjoyable public space in between cars. 
This is a small value. So we basically, we did a one proposal because uh, for, for old Beijing, but designed for future. So we call this uh, proposal Beijing 2050. We saw maybe uh, in, in the future where, uh, that I can see, but uh, some people cannot. Uh, so I can guarantee this will happen because uh, by that time we can, we can control. Uh, <clears throat> and then in this proposal, you can see the old house, uh, but also some futuristic, uh, that, that's a floating bicycle. Um, <clears throat> and there's a, there's a bubble, you see, that's a toilet. So we thought maybe we add some new element to the old neighborhood. So from this model picture, all those small bubble, their toilet. So we insert all this toilet into the corners or negative space or, or corner of a one courtyard. So <clears throat> the idea is if we can improve their, their living condition, then the families who live there will stay in their, 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 uh, their uh, courtyard. Uh, because right now they have to uh, move out because some rich people want to come in, renovate the, the whole thing. Um, but I think uh, compared to uh, preserve the buildings, we should preserve the community. So, so here we, we, we try to just provide the toilet. I think uh, <clears throat> that can help. And then we build one before 2050. Uh, because uh, that's how exhibition works. We showed, we, we proposed that for exhibition, and some guy saw the exhibition and he said, I want to do it. And then this is the one toilet we built uh, like two years later. It's a very small courtyard uh, with two buildings fa facing each other. So we put a staircase in the bubble <coughs> with a toilet underneath the, the, the um, Staircase and a staircase can bring you up to the rooftop. It's very simple. There's a staircase inside. Um, um, but the bubble looks nothing like traditional house. Um, it has a metal finish, so this structure is reflecting all the surroundings. That when you approach it, you don't realize how big or what's the shape of it. You, you see the sky and, and the trees and, and the old house, new house, all reflected in a very weird way into this object. Because the mirror is distorted because of the shape of the, the objects. And uh, <clears throat> it, the reflection is not reality. Um, that was a 2000, Eight maybe the the year we met, met uh, Michael. Um, that was year when Beijing hold Olympic Games and all the grand buildings, uh, landmarks was built. And uh, I was too young. My my photo looked too young. I couldn't get any of those. So, but I think uh, talking about the community and uh, and this small scale projects was very interesting to me. And, and by doing a little, uh, you can have a, you know, some community uh, improvement. Uh, actually, there's a neighbor, I should, uh, I should say that there, there's a neighbor always complain about this project. She was a French lady, and uh, she said, you Chinese don't understand your, your culture, why you do this? Uh, <clears throat> but after we finished building, he, she liked to come to the courtyard and enjoy the wines and all this. I think he, she just uh, um, wasn't happy for, uh, about the noise during the... Um, but uh, <clears throat> I think uh, in this photo, you can, you can see the old building and the courtyard. And then that remind me, there's a, there's a famous... Uh, writer in Beijing, he, he said that the beauty of Chinese building wasn't about architecture. It was about the space in between buildings, the courtyard in, 
So in those courtyards, you have life, family, love, and that's the architecture uh, about. So I'm happy. I wasn't read this um, after we finish, uh, but I was happy that we didn't put uh, the uh, the toilet in the center of the courtyard. We put it <laughs> at the at the, at the side, so the new and old foster this uh, courtyard space as a as a as a as a focal point. And that's a, this photo. You can see the the old neighborhood, and this toilet look like a like a water job or something. Um, but you can also see the high rise buildings uh, around the city. Uh, we have a lot of uh, new buildings. Uh, in Beijing, and the house uh, is like surrounding the, this old uh, center, and there are large scale modern uh, towers. And I want to sh show this actually two photos um, of modern city. On the left is Manhattan, New York, on the right it was uh, China. Uh, this city is Tianjin, but actually in many other cities we're building the similar um, uh, look. The modern uh, urbanism that we borrow the idea from America, uh, from Chicago, from New York. They look very uh, same typology, but uh, different time. <clears throat> this I like very much. This is a photo I found, not, not China, uh, on the, the building on the left is the tallest building in Europe, um, Shard uh, in London, which is a, a, a green building, sustainable, all this, high, high technology. On the right, it's a, a, a hotel from North Korea. I think that, I think that the building on the right designed first, but they, they got stopped because uh, there's some financial issue, and then they start again. Uh, but the interesting thing was they had a very similar profile. Uh, they have a, no high-rise building around them. they both symbolic, and they have a, this profile pointing the sky, really, you know, very, very strong look. And that reminds me of the Gothic church in, in the past, uh, in, the, in the traditional, you know, religion towns. But difference is the, in the modern city, the high rise becomes symbol of a power on the right and the capital on the left. So that's a, a many high rise building, uh, um, symbolic for. And that was my my proposal in in very early uh, competition. We talk about one of the two hundred. And we, we, this one was very close to, to, to win. To, to, we got the second round, I remember. But, but they never paid the, the fee. <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, this, this was in Guangzhou. They want to do the tallest building in China. And then we say, uh, we do a tallest building here, but um, it's 400 meter tall, but uh, the, because the building bent, we say it is 800 meter uh, <laughs> taller, taller than the uh, the Dubai Tower. <laughs> that was a, a joke. Uh, <laughs> I think I think they, and then we we start to like, we but. We didn't only make the joke, we also tried to make the building have a positive ideas. Uh, so the idea was we have a twin tower and they connected on the top and the middle. So we can have a public uh, functions um, in the sky. And we, you know, those drawings look really architecture, but uh, we, we didn't uh, uh, win the project. And the, the funny thing is, six or seven years later, we proposed something similar to Beijing city. And uh, that was a master plan in Beijing. They want to build a lot of high-rise 
and then we propose the same thing, uh, but it looks uh, simpler. And we didn't propose a diagram uh, about 400, 800 thing. And uh, we, won the, we won the competition. And, uh, <clears throat> but, but later, uh, after we won, the mayor was uh, retired and uh, the, the project canceled. Uh, but this time, we propose to have a sky garden on the top um, and to you know, provide this garden space to the, to the, to the people. And there's a, there, there's a vehicle, there's a like, lift connect the two tops so people can, can go from one to the other. And because the, the idea was canceled, and uh, there's another one um, we proposed this year. This is a really new one uh, in Toronto. Um, again, two towers connect on the top. And so we want to make two buildings like growing together instead of uh, one object and, and uh, repeat another one. We met. Uh, get the project um, in Toronto because we, we worked in Toronto before with the same kind, uh, client. That was the one. Um, uh, in suburb Toronto, um, you see these two towers. Um, uh, there was a very uh, big open competition online and because we, we lost that, you know, this 800 meter one, and we were so uh, disappointed and we started to look at the competition outside China. That was the first one we, we, we saw and we, we submit and we win the competition. So the competition was for one tower on the left. So we, uh, this, is a, this is actually the final one uh, they built. We won the first one, and they uh, finished the design, and they release, and they call the first one Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe uh, building. And then they got the building sold out in one day. And then they say, okay, you, you make another one. <laughs> and then, and then they, they say, you don't have to come, we just uh, repeat the first one. Uh, and we, we pay you uh, twice. But, uh, that was uh, attractive, but uh, we say, uh, we explain the idea. So the idea was uh, we try to make a building uh, look natural, uh, look organic. Uh, it doesn't look strong or powerful or, or showing off the strengths. So we, we decided to use all the balconies, horizontal lines to make an organic shape. So we cannot repeat the same thing again because that's something you know, in the modern um, uh, in the modern way that in modern architecture, you know, if you do, do twin tower, you always repeat, but we, we don't want to repeat that um, um, the modern way to make a building. So we decide to uh, take the floor plan. Uh, the same, but uh, rotate the building uh, in a different way. So those are two buildings uh, completed, and they look different. But we, because we, I think they call this Mon Monroe's sister. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, they, because you cannot have a two Marilyn Monroe standing. <clears throat> this is a floor plan. And, and uh, we have a, a very a simple core in the middle and uh, shear walls, all concrete, so we can uh, make the building visible. All the balconies open and the big uh, windows for every apartment. And this is a view look down. Because we twist all the floor, all these balconies start to open to sky. So you get more sunlight into your apartment and you can see your neighbor maybe. Oh, that was actually idea. When we have two towers, you can see the neighbor, uh, you know, on the balcony. 
I think two towers uh, look much better than one because one still, you know, it's about a, a sculptural sculptor form, and two become urban relationship. And you can, you know, when you look at the tower from different angle, they look quite um, <clears throat> dynamic. So those are some photos I've, I've I've found online. And I really like this, and you know, they capture the kids can even capture the the shape of the building. I saw some newspaper. They started local newspaper uh, talking about it. The social media people start to post, you know, uh, their photos with the building. I really like those. And people using the balcony. Uh, <clears throat> because we don't want the solid divisions between the each balcony, so we have very low um, division. So maybe the neighbor can cross there. Uh, and <clears throat> so talking about nature, um, um, we start to think, what if, I mean, if we do small buildings, that's easy to work with the nature. What if we do big building? This was a very beautiful scenery in China. We have to make a lot of house there. So we, that's an uh, image we proposed. We call this um, Huangshan, uh, Huangshan Village. Um, uh, it's very beautiful landscape, and we put the, the building as, uh, as an extension to the mountains. So this uh, uh, topography you see and we, 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 we uh, extend all these contour lines and they become building. So each building looks different and they're different size, different shape, and every floor is different. This is a st study model. You see the building, how, how the building attached to the, to the hill. It's a section. So half, half of the building attached to the hillside and half of the building on the top, like extend the, the, um, the hills. A lot of terraces, they they look like extension of the of the tea field that existing on the site. Those are some construction photos. So you can see all this. There's a group of building, and uh, and each floor and each each building they're they're identical to another, and they every units have a big terrace facing the lake. <clears throat> so we, we want to make sure the building edge look uh, very transparent. Um, it doesn't have a solid um, shape. So from this image you see you know, all these lines, they're really like hand drawings. They're not computer programmed or any, you know, it's not perfect shapes. It's like uh, you just free sketch. Oh, I did a free sketch. <clears throat> Here's another uh, landscape. Uh, I keep talking about landscape because um, in many places when we build a new city, a new architecture, th the context we are facing were landscape, it was not actually a city. So in, in this place, uh, uh, Guangxi province, South, South China, we have a very beautiful landscape like this. When I go there, we have to design a big residential building, so that's the sketch I did. And then I, I could do better sketch, but uh, I decide to, to cap this sketch and scan this sketch into the computer and do the building exactly look like this. Because uh, I think some randomness or, or, I don't know, some emotion was in this sketch. So that was a the building, the final building we, we designed and built. And this was really large, like a mountain scale project, 800 meter long. This is another 800 meter, 100 meter tall, and there's another 200 meter tall hotel. It's really big. But uh, we push all this program into one wall, and we make big holes, and then we lift all the ground level. So, so we can have the, uh, the park, uh, a landscape in front of this building, 
uh, in between the building and beach. So, so this green space become available because we push all the density into this building. And, and this green space become really um, nice public space. And the skyline of the building uh, become a lot of terraces for the units. So they can, uh, those people can come out to, uh, to enjoy the views. So that's a section. You can see the beach and the podium. And on the top of the podium is a park. And these are the, the, the main building. The ground level is, is open, so the air and the sunshine can go through. And that, that's a big, big hole. The big hole can also allow the wind and the, and the, and the sunshine go through. That's a real photo. That's a halfway done, maybe, I don't know, 400 meter. And the building still continue. <clears throat> You can see the park and the podium and the courtyard at the base and the big holes uh, at the terraces. The, the, the photo on the right shows the, the, the terraces from the, on the top of the building. And those are very structural. Uh, you know, those holes, it's egg shape. It's very thin concrete slab. Uh, there's no truss, no structure uh, behind it. It's very thin, like eggshell to support the, uh, the building. And there's a tennis court on the top. There's actually in the hole, there's a, a rock climbing. <laughs> I don't know how strong the wind in there, but. <clears throat> uh, this is another museum, uh, Northern China. We built uh, in 2000, 11, um, the city called Erdos. It's a city, a new city built out of, the, in desert. Uh, so when I went there, there was no city. So I was imagining uh, some abstract building landed on a desert. So you see the landscape look like desert. Um, we don't want any trees and flower and all these urban elements because I want um, any uh, um, modern elements absent from this context. So we show something really abstract and unfamiliar from nature and uh, future, and then we show the landscape feel like from thousands of years ago. And inside the building, we have a, <clears throat> uh, a lot of natural light and, uh, and the wood. And this is uh, the, the main lobby in, in the middle of the, the museum to connect the two entrances. And a lot of nature light again, and the, and the bridges, which is the, the, the circulation path in between the galleries. A lot of natural lights in there. Um, I like this a uh, lot of uh, space uh, look like a cave because the cave and the desert and the canyon, they all look futuristic in this because they look white, but uh, I think those space, they come from really, really long time ago. Uh, but um, um, when you bring them to now, and there is a gap of the time, I suppose. Like, you see something, you feel this uh, from long time ago, but it doesn't familiar, it's, you think this is from future, so you find the time gap um, in the museum. I think that was uh, about the museum, is uh, make the, um, the present absent from the space. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> um, that was a, you know, that was a, a building without green. But I still call it nature because the desert was part of nature. Uh, and this one, we 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 were talking about the snow. Uh, it's also very uh, northern China, a city called Harbin. We did a two building, uh, one opera house and one cultural center. It's really cold place, uh, near border to Russia. Uh, and 
we have the site in the in a beautiful park, but you don't see from here. Uh, this was a construction photo last year. Um, I remember people stop and ask when this uh, theme park can finish. <laughs> so, because the the skyline of the building looked like a uh, you know rolling coaster. Uh, but the idea was we want to make a building part of the landscape, which is uh, the snow hills and the mountain, small, uh, snow mountains. This is some construction process. And we have all the metal uh, cladding, and uh, we have small bumps, look like uh, you know, wind blow the building. And recently, actually, two weeks ago, the building was completed. Um, and we also make the bridge, the landscape. Um, you see the two buildings, and that's the entrance uh, to the opera. This is from the um, distance. You see two buildings and park and, and the city beyond. Is the roof of a building. There is an amphitheater on the top, which is o open. And uh, that, those paths, actually the stairs and the ramps, and that can bring people from the plaza down below, walk all the way uh, to the rooftop. It's literally like climbing a mountain. So that's, those are paths uh, around the building. So those are, uh, that's a big theater, that's a smaller theater, and that's ticketing, uh, a box office, and there's a plaza in the middle. That when the building opened. You see the linear path can lead you from the, this plaza space all the way to the roof. And that's interior, we use the wood and uh, a lot of uh, natural light as well. That's a stairwell uh, on two sides of the auditorium. So we want to make the building again look like a cave or something, and, but uh, making it out of wood make, it, make the space feel like you're inside of a instruments or something. You know, when you go into the auditorium, you, you have a lot of uh, paths and islands. So, 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 so people sitting inside all these islands. And we have all the natural wood. They work very well for acoustic. We actually have a, oh, I'm sorry, this photo actually showing the back of the wall, we introduce the natural light into this. So this, when the light's on, but if they turn off the lights, you still get a, a natural light into the auditorium. They're really well done, the handcraft. Um, that's the lobby to the smaller theater, and that's the stair to the uh, lower level, which is the parking. And this lobby also have a lot of natural light. So we want to have an interior space as light as, as bright as possible. So you feel you're still, you know, in the semi outdoor indoor space. And you have a big window, you can see the park outside. So you feel you're not in some closed building. And that's uh, the entrance lead you to the smaller, smaller theater. Another space with a lot of natural light. That's a smaller theater. This photo, um, not so clear, but we have the, the glass at the back of the stage for the smaller theater, and you can see the water and, and, the, and nature outside. And sometimes they can have a show with the nature as a background. And on the side wall, you see these uh, waves. 
uh, the idea is to bring the water, you feel the bring the water or sound waves into from outdoor to the interior. That's when you uh, look by, look back. <coughs> um, this is another building that looks similar because um, uh, the other one looked like a, a mountain, but this one looked like an island. Well, we put this building in the water. It's a museum, but uh, uh, the museum collection wasn't so exciting, I would say. <laughs> and, but I don't know, I, it's, it's a long story, but uh, we decided to make a museum uh, as a public space first to attract people. Um, so we make an island. We, we think maybe people want to come here, cross a bridge, walk on top of the building um, if they don't want to go into the museum. <laughs> and, uh, and you see the, the surrounding. There are some islands there, so I, I was so, um, I think underneath each small island, there is a huge mountain. That's really interesting. So we decided to make a museum uh, that uh, extend into the water, into the deep water. So you feel there's a huge space or, or history or whatever uh, underneath. And so there's a, there's a approach uh, um, to the water, that, like a beach here, and that, that's the opening to, the, to a museum. And there's a space in between um, two galleries, outdoor. We thought to make the whole thing concrete and uh, like, like thin concrete shell. And interior, we also think maybe we make a caves and this organic spaces. And that's a, a Google map. They, they make a islands in the water, they start to make a building. <clears throat> anyway, uh, why we did all this buildings as a landscape. You know, we make a mountain or make an island. Um, this, is a, this is a interesting uh, 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 photos to show you a difference uh, of gardens. On the French garden, you see the, the, the trees were cut. In the Chinese garden, East, Eastern garden, Japanese garden, you see more organic, more free. And, uh, and every element uh, have to work together. And architecture, only part of it. So the whole experience is important. The same idea applied to the city. Uh, New York was great, and it's a very functional, modern, uh, efficient. Uh, that's Beijing. You see the Forbidden City, uh, which is the center of Beijing. But outside the city, outside the Forbidden City, you see the water system, the mountains, the islands, uh, the bridge. That was all artificial. The, the, the urban plan was, uh, was designed like a garden, like a huge garden, but in different scale. We saw, uh, we saw this concept can only work in smaller scale, but this is a perfect example showing the artificial and nature can become one thing. Like the, the courtyard I grew up, I, we, have a water, we have a small lake in the, in the center, and the, all the famous intellectual people who live there, they're, they're writing poems about the lake. But the kids, we, we didn't understand. We just jump in and swim. We, I learned to swim there, I would do fish. So it doesn't matter, um, you know, this landscape was designed for people. You know, the, Depends on how you understand it, but it's not um, a wild nature. It was it was a plant? So the idea was, if we in the traditional cities or architecture, there's a way to combine artificial and nature together. Is there a way to do it in the mo modern time, or even in for the big city, for the big towers, for the you know skyscrapers, all this? 
So we start to try something. You know, this is a project we did in Nanjing. This is a model showing a lot of towers. It's the, those are not not mountain, but we show the. Uh, um, you know, you see the people, so you understand the scale. There's some towers, and there's urban shopping mall, and there's a. Um, 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 office tower, residential, all this. Um, but we try to make it the whole thing, the urban space, like, uh, like, uh, like we create uh, an urban nature uh, space. So all this big structure become the background, become the, how to say, you know, the very s simple and, uh, and, uh, and all these vertical straps, strips, there are the, the sun shading system, and then there's a, a terraces and the balcony and the gardens behind. And down below, we have a water. This, this is actually a pond on top of a, a shopping mall, become a waterfall um, on the edge of the shopping mall. And there's some um, smaller buildings at the base. We want to make a, smaller village feel instead of a big plaza, you know, big open space. So when you go into this area, you don't feel the pressure from large buildings. So I think the scale is it's, uh, it's important So that because I mentioned earlier when you have a smaller building compared to the tree, the tree always bigger. So the building was easier to, you know, co coexist with the nature, but when the building become too big, that was a challenge. So, it, so we tried to have this smaller building and, and, uh, and uh, very uh, close to the, to the big ones. And we also have a large uh, um, amphitheater and connection in between the towers. The interesting thing in this, those high rises was we tried to uh, create the public space on every uh, three levels. You see the, the connections, gardens, we, we make each three level become a community, and we only have the elevator stop every three level. So when you get off the elevator, there's a lobby garden, and you can take a stair, uh, one, st one stair up or one step down, one stair, one floor down, which is not a big deal, I think. Um, but uh, that can improve the, you know, in the high-rise building, people are too isolated from each other. So here we want to make a, a community. Another case, we're building in Beijing. So both, both cases were large scale and under construction right now. Uh, those two uh, buildings are their office building, but uh, it's on the edge of a park. Uh, Behind the building, you see the high-rise building. You see the Ram Kuhas CCTV. I think that's uh, the greatest uh, symbol of, of modern architecture. It looks so powerful. Um, but here, we try to make something um, more like extension from the park. <coughs> and that's, a, a, that's, a, that's our building on the far right. right. Uh, <laughs> That's, in, that's interesting. The one very important Chinese critic, architectural critic, he started to draw the traditional Chinese painting out of uh, oil, oil painting, right? We, because in China, we never do the painting, uh, oil painting. So he did the Chinese painting in the Western way, and he put all the modern architecture into those paintings. He once, he draw the CCTV, all this building. But uh, when he put our building in there, it looks so fits, fits the traditional mountains. And the building look uh, like black. And all these vertical straps, their uh, they're structure. And all these lines, vertical lines, they're actually uh, mechanical. Uh, uh, air tunnel bring the fresh air from the bottom to the top. And we have a smaller scale building behind it to introduce, again, more uh, uh, comfortable scale next to the large building. There's a waterfall in the, 
in the lobby. Those are some construction photos. The building will be finished next year. You see those, uh, turn, uh, those uh, peaks. Those are air terminal inside. So the air will go through those uh, vertical fins. <clears throat> Some of you might already seen this because we, we were showing this in Los Angeles in another exhibition, uh, a high rise in Los Angeles. We uh, actually not far from here. Uh, we thought to bring the density into one building, and we call this Sky Village. So basically, we have a many, like nine vertical, very slim towers. So we connect them through corridors, and a lot of gardens in between them. So people will take a corridor as a, you see those uh, horizontal ones. They're, their circulation, but also public space, and some vertical lines, their elevators. So this is a diagram we show. You know, um, actually, we were asked to do this. Uh, what if Los Angeles um, needs high-rise or high-density uh, living uh, conditions? So we said maybe you know the city is so flat and um, you know, but, but still feel like a village. We, we flip the village vertical and we bring the circulation uh, in the sky. So that's a model we made. Uh, we have a ramps and, uh, and a stair and uh, uh, corridors connect all this tower. So you, you take elevator, go up, and you have to walk on this uh, corridors and you will see each other, you will passing by the, the gardens and, and there are swimming pools, all this. So it's, it's a new typology of high rise, I would say. And then we Photoshop this building opposite to this museum. <laughs> the black one, I don't know, it's a, it's a future extension, right? It's, a, it's a, of the museum, but on the other side of the street, it has nothing to do with this museum. But uh, there's a brave challenge. Uh, what if we bring the culture, the residential, all this as a one high density neighborhood? So we um, put it there. This, this is not real. So <laughs> don't, don't ask me questions. So here the, the, the podium with the landscape and the elevated towers. And that was the exhibition. And then next one is a real. Uh, we're building one uh, residential in on Wilshire uh, in Beverly Hills. Um, so that's the first impression I got when I came here. I see a lot of a uh, small house built on the hill, and a lot of house <laughs> uh, height, uh, the privacy, uh, all this. Uh, I mean, they're so beautiful, and uh, but you don't see much. Uh, um, but our challenge was to make a community. So this is our site. Uh, we have the green, and we have the villas. We have the house, but the house are on top of the green. It's it's like uh, uh, we, we build a mountain and we build a village on top of it. So on the ground level, on the, uh, on the Wilshire, there's a commercial and very transparent and open to the, to the sidewalk. On the second level and third level, we have an apartment with uh, uh, the green facade. We're using really nice, I think, uh, desert color. Uh, landscape to cover the wall. So it looked like a mountain. And then we have uh, the white, uh, cute house on top of it. And then we have a trees on the roof. So it looked like a village floating uh, up there. It's, it's five level building, but uh, we bring the scale down. So it looked quite uh, uh, 
cute. <laughs> Uh, this is a master plan. It's a, we make a courtyard. I think I think that's a really important for for this project that we want to have a community feeling in the Beverly Hill. Uh, we have 18 units here, and all these units they have their living room, the kitchen, dining room facing each other in towards the courtyard inside and the private the bedroom on the outside. So you can, you kind of can, if you go to the balcony or terrace, you can see each other, you can see your neighbor, and you can see the courtyard. Uh, I think community, I mean, you, you can see this in this one, it's, uh, it, it's, it has a different architectural language, but um, than, than our museums and uh, other building. But for us, I think, for this site, for the Beverly Hill, I mean, community, uh, and open to the to the street, open to the neighborhood is very, very important. Thank you very much.